Well, hi guys. Uh, Josh here, just checking in, and today we are going to be discussing the world's greatest operating system. And as you might know who I am, uh, you know, obviously, we're going to be talking about the world's greatest operating system being Gen 2. And, uh, you know, we just have to, uh, first of all, uh, disclose something here. Uh, I am, in fact, running Gen 2s. Therefore, this is, in fact, a Gen 2 video. You, and we all know that Gen 2 is the world's greatest operating system. So, of course, uh, we, of course, we've got to do the Gen 2 thing here. First of all, uh, I don't have NeoFetch on my computer. So what we need to do is we need to actually sit here and install it, of course. Uh, because we have to be able to prove that this is, in fact, a Gen 2 video. And, uh, you know, it really helps when, you know, you can type your password in right. So uh, while that's working on it, uh, I just want I just want to talk to you about the wonderful benefits of Gen 2 and you know Gen 2 being the world's greatest operating system you've got to have a reason to run it because uh, there is a drawback to Gen 2 and that is called just a source based distribution in fact if if you look over here you can see where I were me in the process of me installing NeoFetch it literally went through it uh, grabbed the source Unpacked the tarball, configured it, ran make install, and compiled it. <laughs> it's all right there. And, uh, you know, what is the benefits of this? Well, uh, the common benefits that you see for Gen 2, uh, you might see some people say that, hey, your software runs faster, or, uh, you know, your software is more secure because uh, it's smaller. But, those arguments missed the point of Gen 2 because we're going to discuss the actual points. So first of all, let, let's go back to the desktop here. So in Gen 2, you have the world's most powerful directory. That is slash Etsy Fortage. Uh, tell you what, I will make the text bigger just for you. And, you know, if I tree out this folder, you can see that I've got some stuff in here. And uh, you can see where I'm declaring a package.use, package and then I got some categories in there. I've got some repositories set up here. I even have a kernel that just so happens to be, be sitting in here. Well, at least a configuration for a kernel. But uh, if I just like cat out, like say package.use, uh, my www client folder, you can see where I'm. Where I'm declaring Firefox here, and I'm building it with the hardware acceleration and LTO. Now, uh, why why am I mentioning LTO and hardware acceleration? Well, there are some distributions that don't build those features into the what into uh, Firefox. Uh, a prime example of this being Debian. Debian does not use LTO optimizations for Firefox, uh, and Fedora doesn't enable hardware acceleration in Firefox. You heard that right. And uh, be so, and uh, you know, if I go back over here and like say I, I check my uh, uses here for Firefox, I have all these wonderful things that I can build for Firefox. Like I can build and support for all these languages. But of course, I don't, I don't speak any of these languages, so uh, we're not building them. That's why the text is blue. And, you know, I don't need Jack support in my web browser. I I guess I, theoretically, I probably should run it hardened, but I'm not. I'm sorry, security conscious people. But uh, that's just Firefox, for example. Uh, now, if, say, you run Arch Linux, right? And uh, we are going to bring this up. Yep, you heard that right. I, I mentioned Arch Linux because, you know, uh, Arch Linux is a great distribution until... You, you use the dative package for what I'm using to literally run this uh, recording right now, which is OBS Studio. So, of course, I already pulled up all, all my build, build options for OBS Studio. And this is something that a lot of distributions actually don't do. Minus deck link. Because how many people actually have a deck link enabled device? Not that many. Because, you know, uh, WebSockets are a thing. WebSockets are better than DeckLink. <laughs> uh, 
But uh, the deck link protocol, it's it's used. I think this. I think uh, the Elgato Stream Deck is about the only real device that actually makes use of the protocol. And, and uh, you can see we're we're uh, now. But uh, okay, so to talk about Arch Linux, Arch Linux disables everything in here except for Pulse Audio because you know you might as well have some form of audio. But you can see I'm building in support for uh, the also sound system. I'm building support for uh, I'm building web browser support so I can do web 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 browser hooks in OBS Studio if I really want to. Uh, typically I don't, but I probably should be delving into that a bit more. And I understand that OBS ships a flat pack, but there's a reason I don't use a flat pack. But uh, you know I don't need the Python support, so I so. I don't build this package, which is what enables the Python scripts, because, you know, I use Lua scripts for OBS Studio. I'm sorry, I just prefer them, because I just know, th I know the language. But, uh, you know, when, and I know that, if you want to explain her as to why this is such a big deal for me, look up the, OB look up uh, Brody's OBS Studio videos. Uh, I, I'll see if I can find the one and have it in the link for the description down below. But, uh, yeah, I'm talking about use flags. Uh, you, and I can t and uh, there are plenty of videos. Uh, I think both Mental Outlaw and another guy named HG Magellan uh, both posted videos about use flags. And use flags are Gentoo's best tool and best feature because I can globally enable or di or disable stuff in in uh, the most powerful file of a. Uh, it in Gen 2, which is your make.com file. These are all the global settings. And you can see I'm building specifically for an Alder Lake CPU with 02 compression, and I'm using pipes for it. And uh, and I'm calling make flags. I'm call I'm building specifically for an Intel system because well, my GPU is Intel and everything. And Right here, I've got global use flags. What I was looking at earlier was per package use flags. These are global use flags. You can see, I'm I'm not, I'm running a system D free system right now. There is no system D here, and I'm building support for all these other things right here, like uh, Pulse Audio because you know we still need to sadly use Pulse Audio because you know PyWire is better, but you know not everything has PyWire support. And, you know, I'm enabling screencast support so I can screen share with Pipewire. And now every single application on my system is built with not only Pipewire support, but screencast support too. Uh, I've still got X in here because, you know, uh, we got to be reasonable. We can't go 100% X-free yet. I tried. Uh, I have a laptop that's actually uh, X-free right now. And uh, finding applications can sometimes be a bit of a pain. <laughs> But you know, it's just like uh, building Vulkan support. Like, uh, did you know that? Uh, did you know that there are some applications that that uh, basically Gentoo is the only distribution that you can build Vulkan support for? I bet you didn't know that. Uh, VA API. Uh, believe it or not, you might not actually need that one, but of course I'm using OBS, so I've got to build. I've got to build with the VA API support. That way, you know, I can have hardware acceleration. But you know, I can just I can just decal, declare a minus app indicator, and now I just don't have anything in my sysstray. I I really can, because you know, what's the point in having what's the point in having a system tray if uh, you don't have any indicator applets? And honestly, Gentoo is probably the only distribution where I found out the easy way how to set up a multi multi architecture support for my virtual machines. I can I can literally spin up an ARM virtual machine on my desktop PC, or even a Spark virtual machine on my desktop PC if I really want to. Do I do those very often? No, not really. But I I can do that. And uh, there is a freedom of control over the operating system that Gen 2 provides me. And uh, as you guys might know, I am very opinionated about my distribution at this point. In fact, most distribu most distributions, including flat packs, piss me off because th they may they may add or remove features I do not want. 
at all. Now, it, Gen 2 is the only one that gets close enough to what I want, what I want, and what I prefer. That 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 is why I keep coming back to Gen 2. Now, uh, can't should I instead be going like Linux from scratch? Should you be going Linux from scratch? No. But uh, I also want to raise up to the point where like you might accidentally learn how to use the terminal with Gen 2. Not gonna lie. Uh, even even the install media is uh, you know written gives you all the options and terminal commands. Yeah, you might just accidentally learn how to use a terminal. But you know, if you want to learn how to use a terminal, yeah, installing Gen 2 is fine for that. But realistically, you can do that in any Linux distribu distribution. But uh, the there is another thing that is absolutely powerful about Gen 2. And that is this website here, specifically this link, the Gen 2 Handbook. And we're just going to look at the AMD64 one here specifically for you. And the, and the reason why I'm raising this up here is that, in general, it's probably not a bad idea to give this document a read. You don't have to install Gen 2. In fact, uh, if, you, if you're even considering installing Gen 2, you're probably going to open up the the Gen 2 handbook and give it a read because it is the quote unquote installation guide. But it goes into so much detail that you can actually use the Gen 2 handbook to install Arch Linux if you really want to. I'm serious. I'm serious. But it it teaches you like uh all these wonderful things like uh say, you know, like let's configure a network network uh you know the hard way let's just let's just do this uh you know ip adder let's uh te test it out uh set up a pp poe connection you know for you know the event you ever need to look, figure out how to use a terminal to connect to a dial-up connection yeah i I've, I've had to do that <laughs> but you know uh it, it it's setting up the network the hard way without cheating with the tool like network manager <laughs> <laughs> that and uh you know it's pretty it's pretty cool and uh you know it teaches you like how to use f disk to partition a disk and uh how to use the tar command to unpack a tarball <laughs> how to use a uh terminal based web browser is also <laughs> in this sandbook as well and uh it it's really really cool how much detail is in the gen 2 handbook and honestly you don't have to install Gen 2. But if you want to learn Linux, reading the Gen 2 handbook is actually pretty useful for you if you're wanting to quote-unquote learn Linux. But at the same time, do you learn Linux by installing Gen 2? No. Do you, install, do you learn Linux by installing Arch Linux? No. In fact, installing Arch Linux, you just learn how to install Arch Linux. Installing Gen 2, you learn how to install Gen 2. However, I can argue that just reading the, the Gen 2 handbook gives you much greater understanding of Linux than, you know, the Arch Installation Guide. Because the Arch Installation Guide is very bare bones. Very, very bare bones. In fact, uh, if I tell you what, what I'm going to do is... Uh, we're going to pull this up. We're going to look up ArchWiki and Installation Guide. I probably spelled it wrong. Yep. It's fine. Everything is fine here, guys. We'll just do this. To, we'll just, we wanted to do it the hard way. But, you know, let's just like take a look at this thing here. Uh, yeah. Verify keys. Do your thing. Uh, set up a boot environment. Make sure that's your EFI. You know, uh, check clock. Just like, hey, partition your disk. It doesn't really explain, like, why you need to partition your disk. What kind? Of, I mean, thankfully, it does tell you what kind of partitions you need to give it. But it's very... You're not really learning why you're calling these commands for the most part. And uh, you're probably just blindly going through your copy-pasting. But, uh, you know, this thing is... This book is just better. I mean, let's prepare the disk. And, you know, it's going to spend, like, the first, well, this entire page going like, hey, we're going to get really wordy about this and explain in detail 
why you need to partition your disk, how you're going to partition your disk, uh, the different ways that you're setting up your... your uh... In fact, the first two sections of this, you're not even partitioning the disk. You're just uh, figuring out how, how, how to implement your partition scheme as well as uh, what the heck a block device is. Yeah, introduction to block device. What's a block device? Well, have you ever ran LSBLK? Uh, LSBLK stands for list blocks. And uh, the, the, these are not drives on Linux. They're blocks. <laughs> because they are block storage devices. And uh, you don't know that if you're reading the Arch install guide. But you know, right here, the Gen 2 guide will actually tell you that. And it's fantastic. Like, uh, this distribution is, well, like the handbook is probably like uh, one, one of the coolest documents that I've seen uh, that is, you know, freely available for something that is largely community maintained. And uh, I am thankful that it exists. And, you know, there, the, the Gen 2 wiki overall is probably one of the three wikis you should bookmark. Because obviously the Arch wiki is amazing. But there are times where the Gentoo wiki is actually better than the Arch wiki. So you should have them both bookmarked. Uh, another one is called the, another one is the Debian wiki, but that one's that one's a little bit iffy. I I'm sure that uh, you can get working on it and get it figured out. But anyways, guys, uh, I just I just wanted to share my uh, my love for Gentoo with you. I'll see you later. Uh, contact link in the description. I'll be posting another video tomorrow.